Hello YouTube, this is Eric from Coder Snacks. Today, we're going to talk about trees. Not the leafy green things, the data structure. We'll discuss how to reconstruct a tree from two of its traversals. Let's get started. Trees are important to understand in an interview setting, and we see them all the time without realizing it. File systems and HTML documents, for example. In this video, we'll learn the basics of trees and tree traversals. As usual, we'll begin with a few questions. How large do we expect these trees to be? Are the elements in these trees unique? These trees are binary trees. Are there any other special properties of these trees? First, what is a tree? You can define it as a connected graph with no undirected cycles. But let's look at it another way. Start with one node, which we'll call the root. This node can have other nodes that we'll call children connected to it. Those nodes can also have children, and this goes as deep as you want. However, each node can only have one parent. For example, this would not be a valid tree, since the bottom green node has more than one parent. Additionally, the first node, the root, has no parents. Often, we think of a tree as directed. We think of parents and children, which implies a direction to the edge. Also, depending on how we implement the tree, we might have a link from parent to child, but not from child back to parent. If you don't explicitly have that directionality, any node of a tree could be the root. Take a look at this tree, where we've shown it as if A has the root. But if we make C the root instead, the tree looks like this. Usually you don't need to make use of this. Your tree class will define how you can interact with the tree and which nodes are parents and children. For some problems, though, keep it in mind. Additionally, nodes will often contain some kind of value. For example, an integer or a name or an object in the same way that a vertex in a graph represents some kind of place or thing. An interesting detail about trees is that every node is also a tree itself. For example, if you look at this tree again, the green node is the root. But you could also look at this node, and if you considered it the root and ignored its parent, this node is also a tree. This property, where every node is a tree, which has children that are also trees, makes recursion a natural way of working with trees. You can often treat each child as your smaller subproblem for recursion, and think of nodes with no children as a base case. There are a few special kinds of trees we should cover. First is a binary tree. In a binary tree, there are always two children or less. We refer to these children as the left child and the right child, and we'll see more of this throughout the video. Next is a binary search tree. This is a type of binary tree where all the left children of a node have values less than the current node, and all the right children have greater values. For example, look at the root, 20. All of the left children are less than 20, and all the right children are greater than 20. Then look at 10. The same thing. Left children are less than 10, right children are greater. This is true for every node in the tree. This allows us to quickly search for an item in the tree. If the value you're searching for is greater than the current node, you descend to the right and otherwise to the left. We won't use binary search trees for this question, but it's important to know what they are as they appear often in interviews. Now that we have an idea what a tree is, let's look at a sample implementation of a binary tree class. We initialize the left and right subtrees to none, and we set whatever value we pass as the value of this tree. Now, let's create the tree from our problem example. The root of the tree is A, and on the left is B, and on the right is C. On the left of the root's left is D, and the two children of the right are E and F. For now, we don't have a way to see if this is working correctly for us, but we will in a moment or two. Looking back at the problem statement, it talks about traversals of a tree. What is a tree traversal? A traversal is a way of going through the tree and retrieving the values of the nodes. There are four you should know about in general. The first three are pre-order, in-order, and post-order traversals. We can implement all three of these traversals recursively. The difference between them is the order in which we visit the nodes. In all of these three traversals, you have three choices. You can look at the root, or the current node, you can look at the left subtree, and you can look at the right subtree. By convention, we always visit the left subtree before the right, so these three orders depend on when we generate the root. In a pre-order traversal, we visit the root first, then the left subtree, then the right subtree. In an in-order traversal, the order is left, root, right, and in a post-order traversal, the order is left, right, root. 
If you look at these three, you can see that we base the traversal name on where the root is. In a pre-order traversal, the root is before or pre the other two. In order puts the root in between the two, and post puts the root after or post the other two. Additionally, if you have a binary search tree, an in-order traversal will generate the nodes in order or in sorted order. We can see that because the left children, which are smaller, are generated first, then the root, which is in the middle, then the right children, which are larger, and this happens at every level of the tree. Let's walk through a sample traversal. We'll figure out the pre-order traversal for the tree in our problem sample. In a pre-order traversal, we start with the root, a, and we'll add that to our answer. Next we go to the left subtree, b. Now on this tree we'll start with the root again, and we'll add b to our traversal. Next the left of b, which is d, which we add. d has no left or right, so we're done here. Additionally, b has no right, so we're done there as well. Having finished the whole left subtree of a, we now move on to its right subtree. Next is c, which is the root of that subtree which we take. Finally, we take C's left, then right. That's the whole tree, and our traversal is A, B, D, C, E, F. Concretely, let's write code for a pre-order traversal. We'll make a generator that generates the nodes in order. First, we generate the value for the root. Then, if there is a left subtree, we yield, in order, the nodes for the traversal of the left subtree, and then the nodes of the right subtree. We test this with the tree we made earlier, and we get the result we calculated. Changing this to an in-order traversal is simple. In-order is left root right, so we move the root's yield to between the left and right traversals and change all the recursive calls. You can see the code is very similar. The fourth traversal you should know about is level order traversal. In this traversal, we generate the nodes for the first level, meaning the root, then we generate the second level, which are the children of the first level, from left to right. Then the third, which are the children of the second level, and so on. For this tree, the level order traversal is A, B, C, D, E, F. Now that we know about traversals, let's look at our problem example again. What can we learn about the tree from these two traversals? Do we know which node is the root? Yes, we do. The first node in the pre-order traversal has to be the root. What can we do then? We know that in an in-order traversal, the left comes first, then the root, then the right. Once we know the root is A, we can find it in the in-order traversal. Then, everything to the left of the root is on the left side, and everything on the right of the root is on the right side. Additionally, since we know the pre-order traversal is root left right, and we know how many nodes are on the left and right from the in-order traversal, we can get the left and right subtrees in the pre-order traversal. Once we've done that, we can recurse. We have smaller subproblems that represent the left and right subtrees. That's our recursive case. What's our base case? What is the simplest case that we don't have to do any work for? One thought is that a traversal with length 1 has to be a single node, which makes sense. However, there will be times when we have a traversal of length 0. Imagine we have AB for both the in-order and pre-order traversals. In this case, A is our root and B is to the right. However, when we do the recursion, we're going to have to recurse on the left part as well, which is empty. We have to plan for the length 0 case as well. But what is the tree for length 0? In our case, it's none. Since we're going to have to handle it anyway, let's have the base case be the length 0 traversal. Let's write the code to do this. We start with our base case as we described. Otherwise, we pick out the root value and make a tree with that value as the root. Then, we find that value in our in-order traversal and recurse on the left and right sides of both traversals to get the left and right subtrees. Remember that reconstruct returns a tree, and the portions of the traversals also represent traversals of trees. What's the runtime complexity of this code? Each time through the function, we're doing O of n work. Where? There aren't any loops in here. Well, probably these list slices are generating new copies of the list, but even if they weren't, think about this call to inorder.index. This looks through the array for the value we specify, but in the worst case, it has to loop through the whole array to find the value. What's the largest number of times we could call this function? That's also O of n. Imagine a tree where the entire tree is skewed to the left. 
The root dot value is always in the last position of the in-order traversal, and we only reduce the size of the traversals by one each time. That makes this algorithm O of n squared runtime. Can we improve this? We need to make the code O of 1 per call. To do this, we need to get rid of list slicing, and we need to eliminate the call to index. We can do that by putting the positions of elements from the in-order traversal into a dictionary. Then we can do the index lookup in O of 1. Let's write some code to do this. This is a lot more complicated because we're going to have to pass around list indices for both of the traversals and a table of in-order traversal root lookups. To keep the parameters to the function the same, we'll make all the new arguments optional, and if we find we don't have them, we'll initialize them at the start of the function. For the root lookup table, we'll loop through all the in-order traversal and make a dictionary where the key is the element and the value is where it is in the in-order traversal. Now, what is our new base case? We want to return none if there's no traversal to look at. If the start and end are equal though, there is one element to look at. We return none when the start is greater than the end. We get the root from the pre-order traversal as before, now taking the start element instead of the zeroth element. We calculate the length of the left tree and calculate the right length for later use. The hard part now is getting the two recursive calls correct. For the tree.left call, we now just pass the original traversals that we're indexing into instead of a slice. For the in-order indices, we begin at the same start as we're passed, and the end is left length further, minus one to make it inclusive. The pre-order indices start at the original start, plus one for the root, and go left length further. The plus one for the root and the minus one to make it inclusive cancel out, and we get pre-start plus left length. Then, we pass along the root lookup table. For tree.right, we pass the traversals, the new start is the index after the root, which is the original start plus the length of the left plus one for the root. We end at the original end. For the pre-order traversal, we use the same logic, original start plus one for the root, and left length. We add a couple more test cases, and this works. However, there are a couple things in this code we don't need. Can you find them? If you'd like, pause the video and take a look. First, we calculated right length, but we never used it. Right length would be useful for calculating the end, but we already have it. We were past it. We can get rid of right length. Second, and more controversially, we don't use preend anywhere. We use inend to determine if we're done recursing, but we don't need both ends. We can get rid of it, but you might not want to. I think it makes the code a little more confusing in terms of what we're passing around. We only need one because the in-order traversal and pre-order traversals have to be of the same length, but this isn't clear from casual observation. You can get rid of it, but do whatever you think makes the code more clear. The runtime complexity of this solution is O of n. Since our lookup for the root is now constant time, at worst we only need to do constant work for each node of the tree, and our runtime is proportional to the number of nodes we need to create. It's interesting to note that while this code is O of n instead of O of n squared, it's harder to write and it's harder to be confident about its accuracy. If we wanted to use this in production, it may be better to go with a simpler version if our trees are small enough. There are a variety of other interesting challenges to take on with this problem. What other pairs of traversals can you do this kind of tree reconstruction with? If it's a binary search tree, can you do it with a single traversal? How do you detect invalid trees? What would it mean for a pair of traversals to be invalid? Can you detect it? Implementing all of the traversals above is good practice, and you can do it recursively and iteratively. Particularly, we didn't write code for post-order or level-order traversals. Another interesting type of binary tree is the balanced binary tree. We saw in this problem some difficulties that can happen if your tree is unbalanced, and keeping your tree balanced is important for good runtime performance in many tree algorithms. It's useful to study some methods for keeping a tree balanced. Next time, we're going to talk about a 1970s board game, Mastermind. Given a pattern that represents an answer, and a pattern that represents a guess, return how many hits, letters that are the same and in the same spaces, and near hits, letters that are the same but in different spaces, are in the answer-guess pair. 
Remember, you can only use each letter of the guess once. I hope this video was useful for you. If you have any questions, comments, something I've missed, or problems you want answered or covered, let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, it would be great if you liked the video, subscribed, or both. See you next time here on Coder Snacks.